Good morning, it's Bob for Truth. So, um, I was reading, came across a verse. I've seen it before, but, um, you know, certain verses in the Bible, it will, um, force you. Because, you know, God is, um, we have a loving God, right? It says God's not, he's patient, not willing that any should perish, that all should come to the knowledge of the truth, right? But then the Bible talks about how people resist, right? How they refuse. And um, Matthew 19, 29 is one of these verses that if you can just believe it, you'd understand a lot. It would ruin a lot of false doctrine. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. Matthew 19, 29. And everyone that have forsaken houses or brethren or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's possessive sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. My question for you is, what do you think this means? Because we know salvation is a free gift. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. Right? And he talks about, for my name's sake. For my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Now, what's peculiar about this verse when you think about it is it's telling you that you got to forsake house, family, brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, wife and children. Right? That's forsaking your family roots because when it talks about this, it's talking about Look, the house, your brother and sisters, that's your siblings, your father and mother, that's your family, quote unquote, roots, your wife, that's your spouse, that's that's husband and wife are one. So that's like denying yourself or children. That's your seed. That's your lineage or lands. That's this earth. And it says, for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Now, we know God can't lie. And we know it's not of works. See, but the truth of the matter again is Jesus said something very clearly. We're going to look up a phrase. Matthew thirteen thirty three. He that received the seed among the thorns. It says, does a man gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? No, it says those are good for nothing to be cast into the fire. He's talking about being born again by the word, by the seed, which is the first fruits. He that received the seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Because look, the children of the flesh are not the children of God. So when it says he becometh unfruitful, it's talking about men that are what? These are spots in your feast of charity. Preach the word in season, not a season. By grace through faith you're saved, not of works. The works of the flesh are made manifest, right? It's talking about the children of the flesh are not children of God. When they feast with you, when they feast with you, these are people who are not saved. You can't eat at the, at the table of the devil and at the table of the Lord. Feeding themselves, it says, without fear. And who are they? They're clouds. They are without water. They don't have the living water. They're carried about of winds. That's the doctrine of men, right? Trees whose fruit withereth, right? That's the flesh, because all men die according to the flesh. They're trees. Every man 
woman and child, what they're going to die. Okay? According to the flesh. Trees whose fruit withereth. And it says, look, without fruit. Now he's talking about because they don't have the fruit of the spirit. He says they're twice dead. Twice dead. That means they blasphemed. Right? Jesus says, I come to give life and life more abundantly. But these are people who are their teachers and they're teaching false doctrine. They've come in privily among you and they don't have fear. They don't have fear. Plucked up by the what? Roots. Right? This matches, right? When it talked about the roots, remember it says you got to forsake mother and father. That's your roots. Right? And it talks about these. He says they're without fruit because all the children are going to die. All they're doing is multiplying death, death, death. They're multiplying corruption. That's why it says it's all vanity. It doesn't profit them. You have children, you die, your children are destroyed, you're destroyed, you go to the fire, you're destroyed. What does that profit you? Jesus says, I come to give life and life more abundantly. Okay? Okay? So it's talking about these people and it says, look, these guys have already been judged because he's blasphemed the Holy Ghost. And it says, look, these guys, there's there's spots in your feast. There's spots in your feast of charity. And it says when they feed with you. Right. They feast with you feeding what themselves, because we come, we're offering look, the bread and the water, the bread of life. We're offering the living water, but they're not doing it. They're feeding themselves. They're actually going around as a roaring lion seeking whom they may what devour. They devour widden, widows' houses. We're saying, look, we understand that you're married to death. We understand that you need to be born again. So we're offering what? The bread of life. But these guys are feeding themselves without fear. Right? Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Okay? So it says, and everyone have forsaken houses, right? It talks about other Pharisees, it says their house has been left, what? Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. This is where Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and he's telling them, he said, look, you guys are blocking the truth. You guys don't believe. You guys don't go in. Neither do you suffer others to go in because you preach a false gospel. And he's saying, so your house is left unto you desolate. Notice it says your house is left unto you desolate, meaning your house was already desolate and he's leaving you in your house desolate, the abomination of desolation. Okay? That's what he's saying to them. Okay? So we're going to go back. And everyone that has forsaken houses or brethren or sister or father or mother. Now, the question I'm going to have for you is this. The Bible clearly says the children of the flesh are not children of God and the children of promise are counted for the seed. The Bible clearly says that. Many people don't believe it, but the Bible says that. And so what this is telling you is that once you're born again, he says you're not no longer of this world. In fact, the Bible has a very peculiar saying because here when it's saying, look, you when you believe the gospel, he says you're no longer of this world. He says you're a stranger now in this world. And this is a foreign land because now... You are a citizen of the commonwealth of Israel. So once you're born again into the kingdom of God, you're no longer of this world. Jesus said, look. And 
And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. Right? I said therefore unto you, Remember he said, your house is left desolate, that ye shall die in your what? Sins. Because they don't have righteousness. They're desolate. They're void of righteousness. For if you believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Okay? You should die in your sins. So when you look at it, it says everyone has forsaken houses or brother or sister or father or mother or wife or children. I want you to think about this the next time you have a person try to sell you on carnal Zionism. Because I'm going to finish reading this because it says, or lands for my namesake shall receive an hundredfold. Remember the sheepfold and shall inherit everlasting life. So this is definitely talking about salvation. You can't let somebody stop short on you when they're reading these verses, because what happens a lot of times is you have people who are carnal Zionists and what they will do is they'll try to tell you something. They'll try to say, well, that's not written to you. That's written for a certain group of people. And so based on this, based on carnal Zionism, they're going to have a problem with this verse. Why would they have a problem with Matthew 19? The reason they're going to have a problem with Matthew 19 is because they're trying to teach you or buy, get you to buy into carnal Zionism. But the problem with this is they're going to say, wait a minute, they have to forsake the house. They got to forsake their brother and sister who they claim are Jews. They got to forsake their father and mother who they claim are Jews. They got to forsake their wife who they claim is the mother. And you got to be born of Jewish, quote, lineage who their claim is according to the flesh. Then they got to forsake their children who are supposedly born of two, quote, Jewish parents. And they also have to forsake lands. But wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense because you're telling us that God has gathered them into the land. For his name's sake. Notice it's a possessive for my name's sake. He says, I am come in my father's name and you receive me not. Another will come in his own name in him you will receive. I am come in my father's name. I mean, this is, I'm, I'm again, the fact that people do not believe the plain reading of the Bible. You have people saying, well, the name of the father is not Jesus. This is not a hard verse. This is not a person squinting the eyes, straining at a gnat and swallowing a camel. This is this is what they do, because it says here, I am come in my father's name and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him. ye will receive you go back to this verse that I just read. He says, for my name's sake. That's possessive. Okay. That's a possessive. So the name of the father is definitely Jesus. The name of the father is Jesus. Unless you don't believe this verse. It doesn't change the fact. Just because you don't believe it doesn't change the fact. Now, it talks about and shall inherit everlasting life. Now, what I want you to do, because you're going to have people like Rene Roland and Edward P.F. from Proclaim His Word and other Zionists. There's so many Zionists in the world, guys. There's people who claim they're not Zionists who are actually Zionists. Steve Anderson is a Zionist. Don't believe. Don't buy his hype. Because his end time, quote unquote, eschatology ties perfectly into Zionism. Him getting you to hate a person who they call, quote unquote, Jews 
tie that that feeds right into Zionism. It feeds right into it. They want you to um, quote unquote supposedly despise them. The people who are behind this lie, they want you to. <coughs> that feeds into it, right? Because then they can say everybody hates quote unquote what God's chosen people. So that feeds right into it, and you hear Renee Rowland saying it all the time. People, I just people just they just hate the Jews. I don't know why they hate the. And you say, well, Renee, no. That's not what anyone's saying. That's not what I'm saying. There's people out there who are paid to do that. They caught a guy who claimed to be a quote unquote Jew going around in cemeteries defacing quote Jew a quote unquote Jewish cemetery. Come to find out, he had ties to Israel, quote unquote the place they call Israel. So there's this this whole agenda going on. The people don't understand. Like, there's the whole agenda. This is, this is an industry. This is this is a, this is a profitable thing. This this, Israel thing is is colonialization. It's the plan for colonialization. That's all it is. And but here it says like you got to say what you say to Renee. You say Brene, you claim you believe the KJV is God's word. One, you claim that you know that God can't lie. Two, and you claim that you believe that the gospel is a free gift, not of works that one should boast. And I agree with you, Renee. Right. I agree that eternal life, that everybody's got to believe the gospel to be saved, period. Now, could you please explain to me and don't let her get out of this? Matthew 19 say, could you explain to me then if if being a Jew is according to the flesh, Renee, how could it say that you got to forsake your house, brother, sister, father and mother? That would be Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and all these guys would have to forsake. David, you'd have to forsake David, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of these people, you'd have to forsake them. Then it says you have to forsake land. Well, that doesn't really tie into that he's gathered them into the lands, now does it? The only way this works, if what, the children of the flesh aren't children of God, so what he's saying is my kingdom is not of this world, and anything of this world is not my kingdom. He says, look, I have come a light into the world that you may, what, be born again if you believe the gospel. But he's saying, look, my kingdom is not of this world. And since my kingdom is not of this world, neither are my children of this world. That's why when you're born again, you're no longer a child of the flesh, but you're a child of the promise because the Bible clearly says the children of the flesh are not children of God. And you would understand this verse. So it's saying that that line, that line, that eternal line, those who have eternal life, he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. See, this is the Bible. This this kind of proves it too. Just go to never die. It's a beautiful phrase. You and whosoever liveth and believeth in me, notice in me. That in me is very important. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me, it says shall never die believe it thou this guys it's not saying oh you're gonna die and then there's gonna be a resurrection it says this whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die that means if you believe the gospel you've already been resurrected it says you should never die so what's the point of the resurrection? Because there's those who are raised in raised in the condemnation, and there's those who are raised raised and they're being declared righteous. There, there's those who are raised in what newness of life. And all those who believe, they passed from death to life. They are currently they have everlasting life. And he's saying, "Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die." Believeth thou this? That's the question. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? See, the reason why Jesus is saying this is because people didn't understand the resurrection. Jesus says God is God of living and not the dead. And everybody before they believed and received eternal life were considered dead. We thus judge if one died for all, then we're all what? Dead. That includes Abraham. Isaac, Jacob, 
David. All these people had to believe that all these people had to forsake their quote unquote this world and the lineage of this world. Their mother, their father, their wife, their children, houses, lands for his name's sake. All of them have to do that. And it's saying, she said it unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, secretly, saying, The Master is come and called for thee. As soon as she heard that, she rose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. The Jews then which were with her in the house and comforted her when they saw Mary that she rose up hastily and went out followed her saying she goeth unto the grave to weep right God is the God of the living and not the dead he just said just above he said he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die did Lazarus believe yes Yet she goeth unto the grave to weep. What is the problem here, guys? Jesus just said. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this. OK. Now they're saying. She goeth unto the grave to weep. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him she fell down at his feet saying unto him Lord if thou hadst been here my brother had not died he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die now wait a minute if he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die and her brother's dead that means if he didn't believe that means he's it's too late that means it's too late for him but if he believed, he'll never die. But he had to believe while he was what? If you believe not that I am he, you will die in your sins. They had to believe today if you hear his voice hard not your heart. He's saying you got to believe now. You can't wait. You can't like die. If you don't believe that I'm he, you'll die in your sins. And your house is left desolate. So he's saying, look, your brother believed. Jesus is trying to comfort her. But yet she comes back and she says, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping and the Jews also weeping, which came with her. Listen, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Why is why is he troubled? Why is he troubled? Because he just said he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Believeth thou this. She's obviously very confused and said, where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Right. Come and see. Jesus wept. Then look, that's a, that's a short paragraph. Jesus wept. <laughs> then said the Jews, behold, how he loved him. OK, that's what they're saying. And some of them said, could not this man, this man, right? It says God raised him from the dead. When it talks about Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection, it says his spirit quickened his mortal body. It says the spirit quickened his what? Mortal body. Well, he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. He gives you everlasting life. That's not mortal. So they said, could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should not have died? See, these guys don't understand it's the work of the spirit. God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. It says it's the spirit that quickeneth that giveth life the flesh profit of nothing. Jesus, therefore, again, <laughs> groaning in himself coming to the grave. 
these people are not understanding. God has left this here for us to understand. He's giving us this here because God knew exactly this would happen and the people would have this misunderstanding. And so we're here and we're reading it and we're discussing it today. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. Okay. For he hath been dead four days. Right. Very significant. He had been dead, quote, quote, four days. But it's the death, burial, and resurrection. He was rose on the what? Third day. So it's giving you the what? Four days. It's giving you the four days. Because in Galatians 2.20, you can say, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. But it's telling you, like, look, Lazarus already believed. He, he, never, he never died. He could not die. He says, my sheep never perish. He's been born again by the word which liveth and endureth forever. It's the incorruptible seed. It's the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Right. So God is ex explaining to these guys like, look, when these people are raised from the dead, when I'm raised by from the dead, these are people who are born again, who already believe and they'll never die. They've been quickened by the spirit. I will quicken their mortal body. But the truth of the matter is they already have eternal life. I am the resurrection. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people, look, <laughs> but because of the people which stand by, I said it. Like I'm saying this for their benefit. OK, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoke, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. OK. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, grave clothes. That's the flesh, by the way. And his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. Okay. When they believed on him, they actually became true Jews. A Jew is not one outwardly, neither is that circumcision outward in the flesh, but a Jew is one inwardly and circumcision is that in the heart by the spirit. OK. But some of them, right, these are the ones who are unbelievers. They would be Gentiles led about with dumb idols. Some of them went their way to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Now, these people saw miracles and still did not believe. OK. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come. And look, look guys, this goes to your Catholic Trinity and your carnal Zionist. This is the sum of the matter. The plan never stopped. All men will believe on him and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. Okay. The Vatican Trinity Catholic doctrine and Zionism work hand in hand. OK. C 
God told us that his kingdom is not of this world. These guys who saw miracles and they did not believe, though they saw miracles, hardness of heart, some did believe, some didn't believe. When you hear a person like Rene Roland lie and say, oh, they are a whole, the nation was blinded. They are lying. The true nation of Israel, the true nation of Israel, because his kingdom is not of this world, is not blind. God's people are not blind. God's people are not sick. God's people are not unbelievers. The children of the flesh are not the children of God. And it says, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Okay. So they said, these guys who did not believe, if we let him thus, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. What was their place? What was their nation? It told you that they liked to sit in the chief seats. It told you that they sought in the place of Moses. It told you that they used the law unlawfully. It told you that they heaped up on men burdens. It told you that they would try to rule over men. It told you that they were hypocrites. It told you that they thought that it was based on their lineage. And Jesus says, I am able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the, ho and that the whole nation perish not. See, they're thinking that he's dying to save, quote unquote, this world. And keep this world, this corrupt world. He says, no, my kingdom is not of this world. You got to be born again because this world is darkness and corrupt. And he says, corruption cannot inherit in corruption and light hath no communion with darkness. Nicodemus, you must be born again, not of corruptible seed. He's the father of lights. Okay. So they're saying. Well, let them die. That way, our nation will be saved. Right? This he spake not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for the nation. Right? See, here's the thing. If I say, like the Bible says, we thus judge, if one die for all, then we're all dead. Right. That's a very true statement. It doesn't exclude the fact that God knew those who would believe. Right. He's saying, look, I died for you, but it didn't profit you being not mixed with faith because I purged the law. Jesus said, I purged the law with my blood. This is the man, the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus purged the law with his blood. He did that for every man. But how come it didn't profit every man? Think about it. If it profited every man, then it says, look, the gospel was preached unto them as well as unto us, but it did not what? Profit them being not mixed with what? Faith in them that heard it. They didn't go to hell because of the law. They went to hell because of unbelief. And you don't receive the spirit after you heard and believe the gospel, your salvation, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. If you don't believe the gospel, you die in your sins and you die in your sin. And the sin is John 69 of unbelief. And not for that nation only, but also that she should gather together. What? In one, the children of God. Listen, guys. Now, this is the part that's amazing. How in the world can you let somebody like Renee lie to you? And not for that nation only. Okay. But that he, that also he should gather together. Right. Right. In one, the children of God that were what? Scattered abroad. 
He that doesn't gather with me scatters a what? Broad. He that is not for me is a what? Against me. We all been baptized by one spirit into one body. It says, look, then from that day forth, they took counsel, right? So there's the wise counselor. Thank you, darling. There's the wise counselor, right? But then these guys are taking the counsel of men. Uh, for they took counsel together for to put him to what? Death. God knew their plan. He knew their plan. Jesus therefore walked no more openly amongst the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness into the city of Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. Okay? So I'm not going to go into that, but this is really important because it talks about, it says, look, There's a very, there's a, there's a verse that I've seen, because I'm going back to Matthew 19. But I'm showing you all this to point to you. It says, God is the God of the living and not the dead. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. My kingdom is not of this world. So Jesus said unto him, because he's going out, and he's telling all these people about the gospel. And he's saying, and another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Now, remember, in Matthew 19, it says you got to forsake father, mother, house, wife, children, brother, sister, and lands for my name's sake. And it's saying once you do that, he says, then you shall inherit eternal life. Okay? But he's only saying, he's saying that because he's saying once you believe, you're born again. You're no longer of this world. You're no longer a child of flesh. And Adam was formed from the dust of the what? Earth which is of this world, which is corrupt, which is cursed. God's kingdom is not cursed, guys. And so he's saying, this guy is saying, well, but first I got to go bury my father. Tying back to Matthew 19. But Jesus said unto him, follow me. How do you follow him? Through the washing, renewing, regeneration of the Holy Ghost. He's saying you got to be born again. That's what he's saying. When he says, take up thy cross and follow me, he's saying you got to die to self. Die to self. He's not saying, oh, you know, you got something good in your flesh. Uh, just turn your life around and, quote, live for me. No, he's saying, no, you got to lose your life for my name's sake. See, you losing people are dying. They're losing their life for other men's sake. They're losing their life for all kinds of reason because they uh, charge that hill because uh, uh, your president told you to go. We go. We got to go to war. People are losing their life for all kinds of names sake, but they're not they're not dying to self, meaning they haven't believed the gospel and died to the old man. And, and a new creature has been created in Christ Jesus. They're not dying to the flesh and becoming a spiritual child of God. That's what the Bible's saying. So when Jesus said to him, he says, follow me and let the what dead bury. Listen, he says, my father knows how he says, let the dead bury their dead. Notice that. Let the dead bury their dead. I mean, that is so, I mean, think about what that means. You got to think this Jesus is cold hearted, man. That's what, that's what people would say. I had a pastor to try to quote unquote, smooth this over this verse. But Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bear the dead. He's like, look, believe God's God of living and not the dead. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. You need to be born again. If your father's dead and he died in his sins, then that's 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 a moot point. He's dead. You know, it's that's it. It's a wrap. But if your if your father did believe on me, then that old man, that man of the flesh, look, that's not your that's not your that's not your that's not truly your father. The old Abraham is not the old Abraham. The old Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, that's the old man is, is gone, passed away. All things are become new. There's a new Abraham, a new Isaac, a new Jacob, a new David. 
And they were all baptized in the Christ. I am the way, the truth, the life. So those who follow me in the regeneration and we're watching renewing of the Holy Ghost, they ever live. They don't die. They never perish. So if your father has eternal life, then you're focused on the wrong thing. He's already he's already seated in heavy places. He's already has life. But if he didn't believe, then that's too bad, too, because look, let the dead bury the dead. Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. But if people don't believe, they die in their sins. OK. I'm going to go back to Matthew 19. So the problem you're going to have, guys, is when you get to a verse like this and you have carnal Zionists, is they're not going to like this verse because what it has is it's saying forsake your houses, brother, sister, father, mother, and wife. Well, father and mother, they're trying to tell you that these people are God's chosen people according to their flesh. So, of course, when you talk to a person like Renee on a verse like this, what is she going to tell you? You're going to say, oh, that's not that's written for the quote unquote Gentiles. Now, the problem with her said said something that's written to the Gentiles is. Um, you're not a Gentile if you're if you believe the gospel. And I know Renee knows this because she's caught, she slipped and said that a Gentile is a heathen before on one of her videos. And so the fact that she says Gentiles is pertaining to believers tells you that she's being deceptive. It says, it's, ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto what? These dumb idols, even as ye were led a Gentile, guys, is a heathen, a person who, who believes on a false god, a figment of their imagination. Now, that would be a trinity. But just so you know, the definition, if someone calls you a Gentile, that's the equivalent of calling you a goyim, which is the equivalent of calling you an unbeliever, which is the equivalent of saying you have a false god. So for Rene Rowland to, quote, say that is huge. Now, if a Gentile is a person who has a false God, then how can a person be called a Jew who doesn't believe on the true God? If a Gentile believes on a false God, what is a person who calls himself a Jew who believes on a false God? They're a Gentile. This is what a Gentile is. Children of the flesh aren't children of God. So it says, you know that you were Gentiles. But if we look at this, it says in the modern versions, it gives it away. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away into these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Ye know that ye were what? Pagans. Pagans. You used to entice and led astray by mute idols. Right? So it keeps te it's telling you right here, ESV, ye were pagans. How you guys let some of these people get away with these, this blasphemy is amazing. It's amazing. Okay? But listen to this, guys. Just to, just to, it talks about dumb idols, right? And just to show you how God wrote his word, how wise God is, I just explained to you that what a Gentile is. And I just said that a Gentile is a person who believes in a false God and a pagan. And I was telling you how the children of the flesh aren't children of God. And I just told you the Trinity, the Trinity is an idol, is a false God. So if you believe the Trinity, you are a Gentile still because you're led about a dumb idols because that Trinitarian false God is a polytheistic God. And it says, look, Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the spirit of God, listen, calleth Jesus accursed. OK. No man speaking by the spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse and that, listen, no man can say that Jesus is Lord. But by the Holy Ghost. Well, wait a minute, just John MacArthur, 
all these other people. We got all kinds of people saying Jesus is Lord. John Piper, you know, Tim Conway, all the false teachers are saying Jesus is Lord. But look, the Bible is saying something very interesting. It's saying, no man speaking by the Spirit of God call it Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. But wait a minute, we got people saying Jesus is Lord all the time. Well, guess what? There's another verse that ties in tied to this. John 9 31 explains it. Now we know that God heareth what? Not sinners. So John Piper and all these people, how does that work? How does that work? It says, now we know that God heareth not sinners. You got Steve Anderson saying you got to pray to be saved. It's saying, no, God hears not sinners. God hears not sinners. But if any man be a what? worshiper of God and doth his will him he heareth now it says God heareth not sinners but if any man be a worshiper of God and doth his will him God him he heareth well who's the worshiper of God Jesus said something it's just funny how the Bible works man Jesus said in John 4 24 if any man be a worshiper of God, him God heareth. God is a spirit, and they that worship him. What does it say? Does it say the option? It says must, must, must worship him in spirit. And here's another thing, guys, and in truth. See, this Trinity thing is a lot bigger than what you think it is. Is not is not as uh is not as harmless as you think it is. Because you have a false God. And it says no man, we just saw it, it says no man call it Jesus a curse, right? No man speak about the spirit of God call it Jesus accursed. Well that's funny because it says No man speak it. No man, okay. No man speaking by the Spirit of God call it Jesus a curse, okay? Now listen to this. Here's your problem Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a what? Curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree. Okay? Cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree. The Bible itself is saying, Cursed is, is every man that hangeth on a tree. Right? It's saying, Being made a curse for us. But then it just told you, No man speaking by the spirit of God call it Jesus a curse. So how does that work? Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, forever. No man speaking by the spirit of God called Jesus a curse. And it says he's made a curse for us. 
and says, curse is any man that hangeth on a tree. Do you think you need to make a distinction between the man, the mediator between God and man, and God, who's a spirit? I think you do. I'm pretty sure you do. The Bible's telling you, yes, you better make a distinction. The Bible makes a distinction, and you better make that distinction too. You know, people can play in the old, uh, I'm going to play in the ignorant camp and just say, just ask you a bunch of questions. Well, why did this? And why did that? And why did this? I answer Renee's question, then she hides the comments. Well, why did this and why did that? Renee is hoping that you don't have the answer. Then someone actually gives her the answer. She's like, dang it. That was my James 2 of Trinity doctrine. She was hoping that no one had the answer. And that's what a lot of these, they, they hope you don't have the answer. They'll ignore the plain verses. God is a spirit. Children of the flesh aren't children of God. Made to be the seed of David according to the flesh. Declared to be the son of God according to the spirit. Children of the promise accounted for the seeds. Not all of Israel are of Israel. That's the children of the flesh aren't children of God. They hope you don't see those verses. They hope you don't put together, oh, he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. They, they don't want you to see those verses. God's God living and not the dead. They want, they want you to believe that at the end of the day, guys, they need you to believe. See, they need you and want you to believe that God's kingdom is of this world and that the children of the flesh are the children of God. And that's why exactly they are making the flesh of Mary who herself had to be born again. They're taking that flesh. They're taking what it talks about put off the old man. Talking about this, the corrupt flesh, which is definitely Mary's flesh is corrupt. Anybody who says Mary's flesh wasn't corrupt and David and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob's flesh isn't corrupt. Then you got to say, well, OK, well, what, what are you saying? You're saying when Paul said in my flesh, there's no good thing. You're saying that that's a whole different flesh. That came from Adam. The Bible is saying corruption can't bring forth in corruption. So if Adam and Eve were corrupt, how in the world did you go around that? It's saying that the root of the flesh is corrupt. And people just, I don't know what it is, man. I don't know what it, I know what it is. But it makes no sense, guys. It makes absolutely no sense. And, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and end this video, but going back to the verse that I had, the Matthew 19 verse, this destroys carnal Zionism. Right? When Jesus said, who is my mother? Who's my brother? Who's my sister? Is those that do the will of my father. And this is the will of him that sent me to all who see the son and believe on have everlasting life. Jesus is telling you that it's not the children of the flesh. And here it's basically telling you you'll inherit everlasting life. So there's no way anyone can get around this verse. Because this is saying, look, you got to forsake your mother, your brother, your, your wife, your father, your children and lands. And you only do that by believing the gospel. And it's saying, look, there are those who never die. And it talks about. Here's a little verse that uh, they. Uh, you never get uh, told about. Their line has gone out through all the earth. Look, their line. That's the I'll make you fishers of man. Think about a fishing line. Their line. Right lineage their line the regenerated their line the light came into the world is gone out right throughout all the earth preach the word right right the light came into the world throughout all the earth and their what words to the end of the world right in them, listen guys, in them, that's those of us who are born again, 
hath he set a tabernacle, look, for the sun. For the sun. Which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoice, rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statute of the Lord is a right, rejoicing the heart that commandment. The commandments of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Right? He can see yourself for who you are, a sinner. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Right? The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servants warned, is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. The great, the great uh, transgression, unbelief. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I know that my redeemer lives. Praise my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, all the sin comes from the glory of God. And when it's asked, what must I do to be saved? Was believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. The gospel of Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. It says he was quickened by the spirit. It says after you heard and believe the gospel of your salvation, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It's a free gift, not of works, lest any man should boast. All right. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. And so the Lord Jesus Christ said, God is the spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in the spirit and truth. I hope you believe it. Praise my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.